Now, uh, you know, I mean, the predominant theme at the show, I think, by a wide margin is artificial intelligence. So we've got to talk about it. And I, I think maybe the way I'm thinking about it, at least, is the idea of not looking so much at the art of the possible, but right. looking at the art of the practical. Right. But yeah, what are you hearing from I your like customers? that. I like what you're saying. It's exactly. Last year, probably there was a lot of hype of AI, and we're seeing a lot of AI today. I mean, everybody's AI. I think it's a table stake right now. But what we're seeing is exactly that practicality. I think we are, we have in our show here. We showed a, a practical way of using AI specifically in in the area of you know deployments of new open RAN, you know all these massive MIMO, and one of the biggest problems like interference hunting, and how it requires a lot of expertise that is fleeting. Then now the, the expertise is retiring and. The knowledge is being lost. AI is coming and fixing that, and we have shown a practical way of how people can actually send somebody who doesn't have the expertise, but AI is assisting them and showing exactly what you need to do, and, and all the different steps to do that is all generated by an, an AI assistant, AI bot that is with our instrument. So we're also seeing a lot of these uh, practical AI in, in operational, in automation. Uh, to, so when you start thinking about how people are talking about AI right now, is more focused on the practicality of it. How I can really use it now to solve real problems that I have today, not things that I need to think about in the future. So this is, this is very obvious in the show uh, this year, is that more AI practicality is being talked about. You know, but at the same time, and you and I were chatting about this earlier, carriers are facing a lot of pressure from board level, from C-suite level to show results from AI, but to show results from AI, gives you a moment to pause and re-examine some maybe other issues you have around cloud strategy, around legacy IT estate. So I mean, how do we think about making progress on what's new while also addressing problems of the past? Right. So that's, that's actually that's a good point. I, I think, you know, 5G and AI and Open RAN have pushed the boundaries of what innovation wants to do. But then operator realized that, yes, I, li I like that, but there was some kind of infrastructure that is needed that was kind of over time was not really put in the same frame as what the innovation is coming in. So now everybody say, oh my God, I, I need to fix these, which are not as sexy as all these new innovation, but now we're seeing the pivot trying to rebuild the infrastructure, rebuild the IT with a different, mi different mindset of how the innovation is going to come in. So that's, I think that's where we're seeing some of the pivot, you know, pivot into transport, fiber, you know, uh, cloud, you know, changing your operational, you know, mentality itself, right? How are you going to manage that? And I think it's a good thing because it's a step back a little bit to, you know, fix your house for, for the innovation that is coming and then you're going to see the coming back of the innovation. Yeah. You referenced fiber there. I mean, was MWC 2025 secretly a, a show about, you know, fiber? It, it is It is amazing, right? Because at the end of the day, people realize that if you want to get that, you really need to have the right fiber interaction, including AI. I mean, we talk about latency, we talk about edge technology that has to be there. You have to have the edge inference uh, engine running and fiber all the way to the edge has to provide these capabilities, right? In terms of just, you know, efficiency, latency, uh, all the capacity, all. So th we are seeing that, right? And it's, it's funny that even the AI companies are seeing interest in, in fiber. All the operators are coming back and say, oh my God, I need to, you know, get this fiber. But also, there, there is also this uh, new ideas, you know, we're, we're seeing security is becoming also even more important with all of this openness right now. So security requires also being uh, able to think about this new era when quantum, you know, they say the zero day of quantum computing breaking the security. So everybody is aware of that. So there is a lot of interest in, you know, uh, am, I, am I ready? Am I quantum safe, right? right? So that I can do that. So there is a lot of technologies right now, like, um, you know, uh, quantum key distribution for cryptography that depends on fiber, right? Because it's all photonic, you know, communication using some photonic principles, right? And we're seeing now people asking us for testing at a different level for how you can do QKD, you know, uh, quantum key distribution efficiently and more, uh, you know, resiliently, right? And then there is all these changes in, in algorithm, right? For, you know, what they call it, post-quantum cryptography algorithm that you need, but 
Can, how can you test that? What is the impact on the performance? You know, your firewall with PQC, maybe, you know, 60% less performing, right? So how we can mitigate that? So we are also seeing a lot of requests from Viabi to do a lot of these test bed for quantum safe technology. So if we kind of look back at 5G, there's that recurring criticism around the difficulty of managing ramping complexity. Right. To the complexity point, you and I just talked about quantum satellites, right. AI, yeah. so I mean, it's, it's not getting not less getting, complex. Not, getting less, but it, not, not only is not getting less complex, the people who are actually managing this complexity are not that many and, and you know, trying to get training up and running with the, with the, fa with the fast, you know, uh, development is the innovation, is creating art. That's why we believe AI component, the practicality of it, of how this has to be, it has to be a system. AI has to assist in developing the innovation that's going to reduce the complexity. So it's kind of like a, egg and, you know, chicken and egg problem, right? You know, you need the AI to manage the complexity. Now, AI is bringing its own complexity, so you're going to have to manage all of this together. Yeah, well, it's been a good show, and it's been good to catch up with you. There's a lot to see, a lot to learn here on the Biavi stand, and I appreciate you sharing your perspective with our audience. Thank you so much. Thank you.